Hi, today we're going to be talking about the tube tool. On screen, I have some objects that I made using the tube tool, and I'll be showing you how you can make all of these things. One thing to note is that these are all invalidated objects, meaning I can still control the path, the shape of this by just playing and adding more points or moving points on my current path. These controls up here are all invalidated controls. If I were to tap on any one of these objects and hit validate, you can see all those tools disappear. And our sculpting tools appear on the right hand tool panel. But the thing that we've lost is the ability to edit that path now, like these. I can no longer do this with my green shape. You can always use the move tool, but then you're starting to distort your shape. It's not really a true path anymore. So, my recommendation is always clone your invalidated object and then validate your cloned one so that you always have a backup. If you want to come back and change the shape, at least you haven't completely lost the original. I would recommend always doing that. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to show you some basics about the tube tool, and then we'll go into making like the hot dog and the spring and these profile shapes. If you come up to your right tool panel, find your tube tool and activate it. And then in your left tool strip, you'll see curve and path. I'm going to tap on curve and just draw a straight line. We get two control points, one at each end, these white dots, and you can move them around. Then we get this tan point, which is your active control up here, which is radius. So you grab that and stretch it. It's essentially your thickness. If you want to add points, just tap anywhere on your path, and then you can move these points as well. Uh, by default, they're curved. If you want to make them sharp, just tap on them. They become sharp and the, the dots turn black. And if you want to undo that, just tap them one more time. If you want to remove a point, just tap and drag over another point. You'll see it turns red. And when you release, those two merge. And you can do the same with it. The endpoints. Let's come over to our path tool now. And the path tool has one stage, which is the path part of the path tool. So when you first tap and drag, it's sort of waiting for you to let go. And if you were to let go, you don't get a tube right away. That's what the green dot's for. When you're ready to commit, you'll hit the green dot and it'll fill in the tube. So right now we're just in the path tool. So some of the uses I could see this for is if you were doing some fine, like if you were trying to follow a path. Maybe you have a, some part in your model, like his clothing, that you want to follow, like an edge, especially if you're doing, you know, like something along this piping along the zipper or something like that. You don't want the tube in your way. So this would be nice to have like a path that you can draw first and then commit it. Just like the other tube, you can add a point. And if you tap anywhere close to either this side or this side, you'll see when you tap and drag, it sort of creates a segment and it magnetically attaches to wherever you are. Same on this side. So when you're ready, you just tap the green dot. And now both of these tubes are essentially the same thing. For snapping, you just need to have your tube tool active. And then I'm going to come over to this tool strip, tap on snap. It's currently at 0%. It goes up to 200%. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Tap your curve tool and let's just draw on top of this sphere. You can see that it's clinging and that there are a lot of extra points along my path. The extra points are very important. I'll show you what happens if you start to remove points. You start losing the, the geometry needed to support the shape. So if you ever run into a problem where it seems like it's sinking into the other object, just add more points. I set up three tubes to illustrate the point about the distance gap when you change the percentages for snapping. So our top tube is resting halfway submerged in the object that you drew on. And that's because the path line runs down the, the center of the tube. So it's the path line that's clinging to the surface. At 100%, which is our middle tube, it's resting just on top of the surface. It's not submerged at all, just perfectly resting on that. And then at 200%, which is our bottom one, you can see that it's floating off the surface. So you can't change these distances once you've drawn them. I mean, I can't go into, I can't go back to snap and then try to to move the one that was at 200 to zero percent. You'll just need to redraw them. I know you're thinking, oh, I'll just move them closer. There's this weird force field thing that happens when I try to drag. I can get closer, closer, but if you happen to touch the object, it puts you back out to 200%. Kind of odd. Anyways, that is snapping. Let's talk about splines. So there are two types of spline modes. What a spline mode does is determines sort of the shape of your path. So right now, everything, every, every time I move a point, my curve follows me. 
But in the case of B spline, let me turn that on and it's up here. You can see that my curve isn't following exactly my path. And the reason for that is B spline is a smoother curve. And to achieve the smoother curve, they're looking at each of these three dots. It's always looking at one point and then the two points next to it. And it's averaging between all of those. So you can see the path always moves in between. It's never touching a point because it's always averaging. B spline is the smoothest curve you're going to get. You can, you can obviously still get kinks if you do something like this. But let me turn it off. And now you can see how kinked it is versus this. Those are the two modes. The non B spline mode has a funny name. It's called Cat Mole Rom, sort of like a Star Wars character. But you don't need to remember that. I just, the only reason is you'll see that word later on when we talk about profiles. But really, it's just B spline on or off. We're going to be talking about closed. And closed is part of the invalidated tools. This is your invalidated tool strip. Closed is really simple. Once you tap close, you'll see that the two ends are bridged. So we get this extra segment that didn't exist before. So you get some rounding, obviously, because it's attempting to close the loop. So you get the, the sort of natural curve happening. And that's it. Another invalidated tool is hole. And if I tap hole, it hollows out my tube. And this is an easy way to make a hose or a straw. I can control now the thickness. You can see that I have this blue dot control here. And that's the thickness of the wall. And it'll remain, the sort of ratio will remain when you scale up. So it always feels like it's the proper scale. If you tap one more time, because there's two modes here, and that now allows me to change the, the inner wall thickness independently of each other on each end. So I can have a really thick wall and a very thin wall on this side. And if I tap one more time, that just turns everything off. Radius is always active. You always have at least one uniform radius control or thickness. If I tap it again, I get another control at this end. And if I shrink that, you know, I get a nice tapering effect. This is an easy way to make horns or tentacles or hairs. If I tap it a third time, you can see each point along my path gets its own control. So now I can do some really fun stuff with this. And if I tap, it, it just goes back to the uniform control. For twist, I've turned on profile. I need, a, I need something other than a cylinder shape. So I've turned on profile and now I'm gonna tap twist right here. And I get this hot pink control. All the colors will always match to their control. So now I'm gonna tap this and just pull down. And you can see it's twisting. And then just like radius, if I tap again, I'll get a control at the opposite end. And what's nice about this one is one side's pinned while I'm twirling. So now I can get this like licorice sort of shape. And if I tap a third time, then each point along the path has its own control. So now I can increase it go the opposite way, flatten it out. And that's it. Tap it one more time and it's off. Rounded tubes are really useful. Prior to learning this trick, I used to just validate a tube and then try to round out the ends or add a sphere to the ends and then, you know, join those shapes and smooth it. This is a much better way because you get to control, you get to have rounded edges and control your path. I've done some experiments and I figured out some values that are a good starting point for you. What you need to do is come up to your ellipse menu, these three dots and tap it. And the first thing you want to do is uncheck tube topology, this little chain link icon, and that'll give us access to the division Y field. First thing to do is drop your division X to four. You can just type it in as well, four. And you can set, I mean, you can set it to four or five. Even if you set it to five, it's gonna set it to four for you right now. That's because your division Y is too high. But when we lower it, then we'll move our parameter up to five. So this is your starting point, four post subdivision and division X four. Now we'll be using division Y to round the ends. And what you need to do is just lower so roughly around five or six, looks like five. It all depends on the scale of your, your shape. So five looks really good. And now I can move up to five on my post subdivision, which is just gonna smooth it. So you can see our, our sort of resolution gets higher. So five or six, whatever looks good. So in some cases, you know, that's a perfect hot dog, but in some cases you might, you know, you might just decide you want it really thick, but you can see that you're starting to lose that shape. The roundness is gone now. And that's easy to fix. You can come in here and you just need to lower it to maybe three or two. So that's probably as far as we can go. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's snapping back. I'm trying to go to one, but it snaps back. But we have a nice rounded edge. And the reverse is true as well. If you shrink it down, you're going to get these pointy ends. And when it's sharp or when it's pointy, you need, to, you need to take division Y and move it up. So now we need to move up to around 10. Now we got this really long hot dog. So the flatter the ends are, you want to go down. And the pointier they are, you need to go up with division Y. So division Y is your rounding tool. That is your only control. And you can just keep division X at four and you just play with the subdivision. So that's rounded tubes. So in the beginning of the video, you saw I had a spring spiral shape. It's very easy to do. That's just in this ellipse menu as well. If you come down, you'll see that there's a spiral option. And if you check it, then you'll have access to all these controls. So to twirl or sort of create that spring shape, it's a twist angle, then you increase your radius and you've got a spring. Literally, that's it. The scale here is just the thickness. So you remember you have this radius control out here, but when you control this radius, it's it's almost doing the job of radius and scale within the spiral menu. So you can see you can see it's growing and scaling. But what's nice about this menu is scale does not affect your radius and radius does not affect your scale. So very nice. The angle offset just determines where your start and ends are positioned. So now you can make a guitar cable and if you want to really make it tight, you can do it like this. And if you want to bend it, that's the nice part is this is a live path. It's an invalidated object. So you get to do really fun stuff with it, bend it in all kinds of way, make it all really crazy, crease it to scale. So you can make like a cool guitar cable, coiled guitar cable or an 80s telephone cord or something like that. So that's spiral. To turn on profile, you just need to come up to your invalidated toolbar up here. Just tap it once. So you can see that it switches from cylinder to square. And the reason why it's square is because under the, the next profile, it's truncated. I believe it says profile shape. But the next profile button here, if you tap that, you see this grid down here. And if you don't notice, in the corners are our four points. And that is what makes up our profile shape. Profile shape just meaning, you know, what the tube shape is. So if I were to drag this to be a triangle, you can see that live update on our tube to the left here. If I were to just tap tap the black dots to be white and round them out, we're basically back at our back at our cylinder shape. But there's a lot of fun things that you can do. You basically, you know, whatever you can think of in terms of shape, you can probably do. I know you can see that it's snapping a lot to the grid. It's also very hard to work when it's really small like this. So I tap this button up here, the full screen button. The cons to this are obviously you don't get to see your tube live updating, but there are many times when I just want to work like this. I'm just trying to figure out shapes and it's a little too small for me to work. So I'll work like this. The snapping part I find useful, but there are times when I, I don't want something to be so strict. So I just have snap on up here. You can turn it off. And now you're not bound to the grid, but I do tend to work this way when I'm first discovering shapes. I keep it on. A lot of times I'm trying to, I'm trying to make perfect symmetry. So I, I want to like, you know, I'm counting how many squares over I am and all this kind of stuff. So here that helps the, the snapping helped me there. So let's just take a look at what my shape looks like now. So I've created this, it's like a marble run. If you know what I'm talking about? This slide shape, kind of cool. So you can do a lot of really fun stuff in that same menu. Say you do like the shape and you don't want to lose it. You can come over to the presets menu right here and you can hit new. And right here is the shape that we just made. So now if I were to hit reset and the reason why you reset is because you just want to start a new design, but now I don't have to worry. I have my shape that I can always recall just by tapping on it. And I had made all these shapes here and it's fun to cycle through them. The M is one of my favorites for sure. Just letters are kind of fun to see. So yeah. I, I don't really have a lot of smooth stuff here. So if I add it, just remember you still have that B spline versus Catmull ROM. If you watched the spline modes part earlier in this video, then you'll remember Catmull ROM versus B spline. So that's really it. And then the only other thing is how many, how many profile shapes you want. So this is one profile shape through the entire tube. If I already come up with the profile and just tap it one more time. Now two dots are active. And you can see I have a square at one end now. So now if I come into my profile, you can see I have an M and I have a square. So let's tap the square. 
and then we can just start drawing something or I can come to my presets and then I'll hit T. So this was one of the examples I had at the very beginning of the video. I can hit twist to bring this sort of forward facing. Yeah, we'll just leave that, that's fine. I'm trying to bring it closer together, okay? So that's the way that you can have different profile shapes at each end. And that's how I achieved having two shapes at each end. And then the crazier thing is, is I added a dot here. And when I go to my profile shape, you can see there's an extra shape right here. I can't access that one. And that's because I don't have three dots active on my profile. If I tap it one more time, you can see I now have access to, this is like the transition shape between M and T. I could just reset this and make it square. Actually, I gotta go and just make it a tube. So at some point along this curve, it doesn't look like it, but it was supposed to be a tube somewhere in the middle. Do I not have that active? I do. And take a look at this. I could add a bunch of points. Come back to the profile and look at how many extra profiles I could have. I don't even know what the cap is really. I'm gonna just make all these. I'm gonna go on preset. Just make these all circles. That one's kind of already a circle, I think. I don't know why you do this. Well, maybe. Okay, so now I've added in enough circles along the path that you can see. And then obviously it's gonna do the math to figure out the transition from a circle to a T and a circle to the M. But that's, I mean, that's the basis for what I did earlier at the beginning of the video. So I think I had, I think I was using this one as well as this one. Yeah, those are my shapes. So that's how you do the profile. Uh, send me something. I'd love to see if you made something cool using any of the techniques in this video. Thanks for watching. Keep making things and I'll see you next time.